Bill, uh, did you have any questions before I even start my statement? Because each gentleman are going to answer questions for you. Just go ahead with the uh, statement then. Okay, we'll, yeah. sure. Let me get my notes out here. Okay, in 1970, the city of Hickory changed from a pure ward system to a modified at-large or blend system for electing city council members. Uh, this meant that council members were nominated from their wards through primaries, but had to be elected citywide. Uh, this change created an electoral system which has eventually led to unrepresentation of lower income and minority citizens in elected positions. A group of concerned citizens from various wards in Hickory have initiated a petition to bring about a public referendum on this issue. These citizens believe that each of Hickory's six municipal wards should have a representative on the city council elected by the people of that ward. They also favor having the mayor and two or three council members elected at large. This petition requests the Hickory City Council to change its present electoral system of the at-large system to a pure ward system, a system that will let citizens of each ward elect their own representative. Advantages of a pure ward system include a more responsive city council and city government to their local neighborhoods, and more voters would be encouraged to participate in elections. A pure ward system is more efficient and less costly than our present system. Above all, it brings government closer to the people and therefore is more democratic. Studies of cities where representatives are elected by wards have borne out these facts. Citizens of Hickory interested in supporting the petition can contact Citizens for Equity and Government at 828-308-4669. Uh, thank you for coming today. If you have any questions, we'll take those now. Billy, I don't think that most people understand the dynamics of, of the elections in our area, and they don't understand the issues of North Hickory versus South Hickory, and that's what I think that you're addressing, and it's not only a racial issue as much as it is a socioeconomic issue. Yes, it's mainly it's, uh, it is a socioeconomic issue. You'll find that uh, the co-op is structured, uh, co-op and Hickory basis, basically uh, runs this city. We found that out when the Hickory, uh, a few years ago, when it been that many years ago, the Hickory tried to uh, ask co-op and Hickory to uh, address the, kind of the, the, the question of the streets. They haven't repaired, and it was a very good idea, according to city council. Hickory did a record around an editorial on it, and then when a member of the co-op community came in and addressed the city council, was a terrible idea, and they changed it that quick. Only three precincts represented 1,400 out of those 2,300 votes, and those three precincts right. are located in the Beaumont area. Right. And those, it, those issues have been addressed. If you go to the south side of the tracks in Hickory, you see a, a problem with infrastructure that right. you don't see on the no. north side of the tracks. That's right. It's and that's where the that. equity comes in. Right, and jobs. And you said, you said equity. We are not in the loop, and we know it. But you've, it's been represented that this is just an, a Ridgeview group. We know that was the mayor's concept that this was a racial issue. This is an issue of a representative government. You right. know, right. Uh, we don't have it. Neither do the uh, other uh, 20, 23,000 uh, voters in the city who didn't show up at the last election. They don't have it, so they're not involved with it. That's, you, that's you how have, you disenfranchise. You have 27,000 registered voters in right. Hickory and only 2,300 people that voted in the last city election. You have three unopposed candidates during this election. Right. And that's the issues that you're trying to bring. That's forward. when you know you've been disenfranchised. Yes, sir. Um, what about the fact that there are no blacks on the city council? I mean, is that something you're trying to address as well? But that could have easily have been addressed if the city had uh, uh, developed the majority minority ward concept and they redistricted. But in order to accommodate one of their setting members on city council, they decided not to develop that majority minority ward. And when one that they the plan that they had and said they had a majority minority ward had a large number of uh, immigrants who can't vote in a majority of the so-called majority black ward. But they did not address the fact that at that time they could have had a majority minority ward. But we still would have been pushing for a pure ward system. It's a question of democracy.
in the ward that Ridgeview sits, is that majority black or is it majority white or do you know? So it's, it's a mixture of uh, Hispanic and black and they have sprinkled between white and mom. That's what that ward is. And how long will the uh, petition drive last? It'll last, uh, at this particular time, we're not, we don't have a target date. What we, our target date is to, is to uh, get 10% uh, of the population to, to sign our petition. And then we don't have to have a target date, target date if the city council would address it itself and change the present system the way that they did in 1970. But they chose not to. They chose not to actually even listen to the whims of the, of the citizens of Hickory about wanting de, uh, democracy at the local level. Can you show us one of the petitions? Do you have one of them here? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you, you're hoping to get 10% of the voters to sign this? 10% of the voters. What are you going to do with once you get that? We're going to first, we're going to take it to city council and ask them. If them not, we'll ask for a referendum from the city. If not, we're prepared to go to the general assembly. We would like to see a, a referendum because in 1970, this was not ever put on a ballot. It was not. And it, and I come from north north end of Hickory. I come from up, up near uh, in the Falling Creek area, up in that area. And we don't have that same, you still have the same issues going on because you have the same problem of you're not representing being represented only by the person who's from your area and, and to carry that out. And this is what the petition's about. We want to see everybody have a representative from their own ward. And then we could run, then people, you could have some other councilmen who are, or council members who were run uh, at large. This has been the direction of most cities as they grew uh, in, in the last 20 years as they got larger. But like from each of the so wards, there are two people who are put up, and then out of those two people, the nominating person. process yeah. involves in, involves somebody that lives in the ward. That's the blended system that Billy talks yeah. about. Uh, but at, when you go to the election, you're elected from the entire city. But still, there's so one person coming from that ward. There is one person but coming from the ward. Many times, the person, the, the top two vote getters, who run for the citywide office, of those top two vote getters, sometimes they were not the choice of that particular ward yeah. to sit on city council. And it was Hank Guest the number one vote getter out of the ward? In the primary? In the primary. Not, not in the primary. Not in the primary. And the, and the, if and anything, I would think times. just letting the city council, um, putting the question to the voters, put it on the ballot, mm -hmm. would you, and again, we have the system of getting people to the polls at any election, um, but the idea of at least letting the people decide whether they want the at large the election. So it's happened how many months prior to the November, to the, the general election? When does it happen? In, in the spring? About six weeks prior to the oh, general six election. Weeks. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of folks that would, uh, but I think, we think there, there are a number of people, I know there are a number of people I've talked to who would be more likely to run for city council if they did not have to run a citywide in a citywide election. They can't afford to run. So again, that's where the socioeconomic that issue. What you're saying okay. as far as uh, that there are many people who I think would be willing to consider running for office in uh, for city council uh, if and if they could afford to, and they can't afford to run a citywide race, but they could afford to run a neighborhood race, a ward race, where they could go door to door knock on doors, talk to people. You can't get to all the people in the city, but you can get to your neighborhood. And that has been the, the uh, history of this all across the country. Uh, there have been places in this country where, in Irving, Texas, just uh, uh, last year, a judge ruled that they had to go to this system, uh, for example, because of uh, the dilution of minority voting. But again, I like to say that we're, we're very clear that this isn't just a racial issue. It's a, re a representation issue, and that's how we wanted to look at it. Okay. Yes. Your name, sir? My name is Cliff Moon. Cliff Moon. Mm -hmm. M O N E. N E. N -E. N -E. Okay. Right. As far as the money issue, it's been talked about that that this special referendum is going to cost more money. But in the long run, is it not going to be cheaper 
it to is have always this form of an election because you're going to do away possibly with the primaries and just have a general election and you only have to have three wards that are open for three yeah. the precincts in three wards as opposed to having having all six wards have precincts open in a general election in the form that we have historically this method that we're promoting is a, a, a less expensive uh, election process and anyone could do a Google search ward versus at large and there's been study after study and so depending again on the city the, the population and again our new census numbers who are going to we're going to be uh, changing our lines our uh, the districting maps will change so all of that has an impact and the growth we've all seen here in this county not alone the city so um, all of this plays into it but a simple Google search for Jane and John Doe out there will educate them as to what other cities have faced and why they went to the ward system so uh, because a lot of people don't understand it is complicated now let us point out that this that the city school board at this present time is a ward elections only it's not done at large there is an at large member just like what we're promoting here for the In city council we here. think that's fair we think that's more representative that's the whole point if there's a if there's a referendum and if it is successful the issue still has to go to the general assembly does it not no since there's an amendment on the city charter I don't think they went to the General Assembly when they changed it in 1970. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe it does. I think the city in their charter has That's the right, right to change. Right. The the in fact, charter. the city council can do it itself, mm -hmm. which is what uh, Mr. Stand, Sutter said earlier. We'd like, you know, and that would be fine, but I still think personally that this needs to go before the people. Yeah. It's a democratic issue. This takes in the, in the charter. involved in actually, you know, going around with, with the petitions. Oh, I don't know where we are. I have one. I'm passed out in the neighborhood. Myself, people I know, and I don't know how many people. So it's a grassroots. Yeah. It's a grassroots. It's, we've spread it out, Larry. We, I mean, you yeah. know, oh, yeah. 20, oh, you know, I'm to sure. a number of different and people. Both sides of the track, taking it door to door, and places like that. We probably, you know, and I'm giving people and take to the churches. We've been to the churches, some of the churches. That's where we had to go, you know. And we've been in, on the streets at the post office, at the grocery stores, so we'll be around. I think it's been set, stated by one of our elected officials that this was just a few disgruntled people over in Richmond. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that. How would you address that issue? Well, look. Uh, well, let me, let me address it, okay, really, for this moment, Tom. Uh, the one, uh, again, I come from north, northern Hickory. Some other folks that are here today come from various areas outside of Ridgeview. I've uh, been involved. Um, the local Democratic Party back in the spring, when we, when the when the um, when the um, uh, dis redistricting was on the table, we brought this up. Uh, the city council at that time, a statement was made, not a vote taken. A statement was made that this wasn't the issue before them. And that they had no, they had not been charged with that issue, which is why we started the petition process. But the Democratic, the local Democratic County Democratic Party, uh, passed a resolution supporting the efforts of the Ridgeview uh, community and others to change this system. Too. So. Well, how do you feel about that when it's been stated that that this is a non-affiliated body, and that the Democrats were brought into the issue? And, and are turning this into a partisan political issue. I don't feel like that that was the intent of it. It was the intent was to say from a group of a larger group of people who gathered that they had a concern for a constituency that was uh, being uh, diluted by the present system and that this was a way that, that we could uh, stand in concert with them. That was really the, the point of that. Not not to say it was a partisan issue or not. We didn't actually, uh, we brought it before the city. We, we recognize that, that the city council is a nonpartisan uh, elected uh, body, and that's true. But, but still, that doesn't change the right of groups who, are, who have a partisan agenda at times from standing up and saying, you know, this is how we feel about this. Because we care about the city too. So, and I hope, and in fact, I know that there are 
at, at this moment. And you know, there are Republicans here right now who are in favor of this as well. So this is not a single party issue at all. And I would hate that to be the take on it, which I explained to the mayor. So. All right.